On October 3rd, 2014, an argument took place on an episode of Real Time with Bill Maher. The two people involved in the argument were neuroscientist and best-selling author Sam Harris, the other actor and Academy Award-winning filmmaker Ben Affleck. Liberals have really failed on the topic of theocracy. They, they, they'll, they'll criticize white theocracy, they'll criticize right. Christians, they'll still get agitated over the abortion clinic bombing that happened in 1984. But when, <laughs> when you want to talk about the treatment of women and homosexuals and free thinkers and, and public intellectuals in the Muslim world, uh, I would argue that li liberals have failed us. And uh, the crucial point of confusion, uh, yeah, well, thank you. Thank, thank you. God you're here. Yeah. Shortly after Harris made this argument, Affleck promptly countered. But why are you so hostile to, about this? It's, it's gross. It's racist. It's, it's so not. Dumb. It's but it's so. Nuts. It's so. It's like saying it's those so not your shifty Jew. You're not listening Absolutely to not. what well, we are saying. The panel never fully recovered after that. Ben, we have to be able to criticize bad ideas. And of course we Islam, do. No liberal doesn't okay, want to okay. criticize bad but ideas. Islam but Islam why would is the mother load of bad ideas? Jeez, so it's an ugly apostasy. It's like, it is it's basic liberal. Well, well, let me unpack it. Tolerance. Let yeah, me exactly. let me unpack it. But not it. for intolerance. No, okay. so I wouldn't say, well, Ted Biden did this. God damn, these gays are all trying to eat each other. You don't understand my argument. Your argument is like, you know, black people. You know, they show. No, it's not. It's the only religion that acts like the mafia. You, that will fucking kill you that, if you say the wrong true. thing, I mean, draw true. the wrong picture, or write the wrong book. So or how about the more than a billion those, people those who aren't fanatical, who don't punch well, women, who just want to go to the store? Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Any of the things that you're saying all must be wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. What the hell went wrong here? What caused this debate to fall off the rails, and why was it unable to get back on track? Well, one thing that's beyond dispute is that Ben Affleck disagreed with Sam Harris's argument, judging it to be racist. So what was Harris's argument? His argument was that liberals are not thinking and speaking critically of Islam as they should. As clear as Affleck made his disagreement, it's not clear where exactly the disagreement lies. Many of Affleck's counterarguments only knock down straw men. The question is the degree to which you're willing to say, because I've witnessed this behavior, which we all object to on the part of these people, it's I'm willing to flatly condemn not, those of you I don't know and I've never met. No, this is not based condemning on people, it's yeah, ideas. It's, ISIS I like couldn't fill a double-A ballpark in Charleston, West Virginia, and you were making a career no, out no. of ISIS, ISIS, ISIS. But no, 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 not just ISIS, it's, it's the all jihadists. I don't think like, any of the things you're saying all Muslims. Okay, wait a second, wait, 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 wait a second. I disagree with what you think. I don't actually understand And we're obviously not convinced of anybody of the year. If you don't understand my argument, you know. Your argument is like, you know, black people, you know, they show each other. It was almost as if Affleck was arguing with somebody who wasn't there. But nevertheless, Affleck called Harris's argument racist, and Harris's argument was to criticize the doctrine of Islam. So by default, Ben Affleck's argument was, criticizing Islam is racist. By now, you're probably wondering where the word racist came from. Islam, after all, is not a race. Okay, to give Mr. Affleck the benefit of the doubt for now, let's just say that he misspoke. It's very likely that the word racist could be replaced with bigoted, and the meaning of what he was trying to say would not be lost. But as it happens, there's actually a single word that embodies this very argument, and that word is Islamophobia. So, what exactly is Islamophobia? Well, the definition goes as follows. Prejudice against, hatred towards, or fear of Islam or Muslims. Now, what's wrong with this definition? Represented by this one word are two different tasks. Resenting Islam, a religion, and resenting Muslims, the people who practice it. Condemning Islam and condemning Muslims are two very different things. One is holy text, a collection of ideas. The other are human beings, who who subscribe to those ideas, maybe, maybe not. And just to make things even worse, the definition also draws no distinction between hatred and fear, which, again, are not the same thing and should not be incorporated under a single term. This might just explain why Ben Affleck got Sam Harris's criticism of the religion mixed up with prejudice towards all Muslims. After all, this clumsy definition opens the door for such confusion, and yet the definition, with all of its pitfalls, is not the only 
only headache. The word itself has been constructed very thoughtlessly as well. The first half of the word is a clear swing and a miss. Once again, Islam is not a person, it's a religion. The actual believer is a Muslim. The second half of the word is its own problem entirely. If the definition entails prejudice, Phobia doesn't fit the role. A phobia is an extreme or irrational fear of something. They're not the product of ignorance, intolerance, or piss-poor education. They're a vulnerability of the human psyche, and anyone who suffers from them cannot simply be talked out of it. So if, for the sake of argument, somebody really did have a phobia of Islam, number one, it wouldn't be their fault, and number two, shouting at them probably wouldn't help. But who says a fear of Islam needs to be irrational? Suffice to say, there is text within the Holy Quran, as well as other holy books, that any rational person could conceive as being scary. <laughs> The point is, a fear of Sharia law is infinitely more rational than a fear of clowns, or spiders, or the dark. All things considered, Islamophobia is a gawky, ill-conceived word constructed with little to no sense of the English language, it has no respectable or useful working definition, and it's pointless. There's no need for a word that identifies a specific brand of bigotry, there's already a universal word for that. Bigotry. So why the need for this exclusive and incompetent Frankenstein of a word? Well, there's something worth mentioning about liberals that ties into all of this. A quick American history lesson, if you will. Throughout the 20th century, liberals have usually been on the right side of history. When women were fighting for the vote in the 19-teens, conservatives were opposed, but liberals were supportive. When black communities were fighting for their civil rights in the 50s and 60s, conservatives resisted, but liberals championed their cause. From the 1970s into the 21st century, as homosexuals fought for legal marriage, conservatives objected, but liberals defended. Liberals have a history of striving for equality, and this is one of their best qualities. Unfortunately, they also have a weakness. If there's one thing that your average liberal will avoid at all costs, it's being called a bigot. That is the last thing they ever want to be called. Remember, they look at history and are determined to fight against bigotry. It's sad Sad to think that this impulse could ever be a weakness, a, uh, a kryptonite, if you will, but sadly enough, some people exploit this impulse by arguing that criticism of certain subjects is bigoted. In this case, they'd argue that criticizing Islam is bigoted, and not only does it work, it's easy. Ever since the attacks of September the 11th, Muslims in the Western world have faced a great deal of hatred and hostility by actual bigots, actual bigots, people who are not interested in having debates people who are not interested in learning anything, and people who are not interested in reforming the religion. They just hate Muslims. You are terrorists. The people you tortured are going to be in eternity in heaven. Every one of you are terrorists. I don't care what you say. I stand against Islam and the false prophet Muhammad. You have nothing but hate. Nothing but hate. Every Muslim is a terrorist. Period. This lady was talking about my God. She was saying he is there. Islam will never dominate the United States, and by the grace of God, it will not dominate Texas! As you would expect, liberals swooped in, and rightfully so, to stand up for Muslims on the receiving end of bigotry. But keep in mind, at the same time that this is happening, political opportunists took advantage of this climate to make valid criticism of the religion itself come across as just as intolerant. And because a lot of liberals will do anything to avoid being intolerant, they began to also go after people who were not bigots, people who were interested in having debates, people who were interested in learning, and people who were interested in reforming the religion. Liberals have dismissed them as well, and all they needed was the word Islamophobia, with its sloppy, irresponsible definition to encompass those who hate Muslims, hate Islam, fear Muslims, fear Islam, constructively criticize Islam, condemn certain actions by by certain Muslims and those who try to encourage a renaissance within the Muslim world. This term takes all of these very different types of people and plops them into the same camp. Islamophobia is a meme, where every criticism of the doctrine of Islam gets conflated with bigotry towards Muslims as people, which is intellectually ridiculous. It even exploits white guilt, causing it to slip Freudianly when people argue that it's racist. 
This is the problem with Islamophobia. And if Sam Harris had just taken the time to explain this to Ben Affleck beforehand, this whole misunderstanding could have been completely avoided. Right? We have been sold this meme of Islamophobia where every criticism of the doctrine of Islam gets conflated with bigotry toward Muslims as people. Right. And that is uh, it's, it's intellectually ridiculous. They even it gets So hold on, are racism. you the person who understands the officially codified doctrine of Islam? You're the uh, interpreter well, of that, well, so you well, can say, well, I, this I'm, is... I'm, I'm, I think actually, any, I'm actually well-educated well, on this topic. I'm, I'm asking you, so I mean, you're you, saying if I criticize the... You're saying that Islamophobia is not a real thing. That if you're critical of something... It, well, it's not a real thing when we do it. Right. <laughs> well, well, no, it no, really no, isn't. I, I'm not denying not, that, that certain people are bigoted against Muslims as people. That's, right. And that's a that's problem. big of you. But the... But why are you so hostile to, about this? It's, it's gross. It's racist. It's, it's not. Hostile. It's but it's so nuts. It's so. It's like saying it's those so not your shifty Jew. You're not listening Absolutely to not. what well, we are saying. On second thought, maybe Ben Affleck was not listening to what they were saying. Maybe, just maybe, he had no intention to listen. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. God you're here. Yeah. yeah. Certain people are bigoted against Muslims as people. That, right. And that's a that's problem. Bigoted. Ben, well, let me you, let me unpack this. Let me unpack this for you. Please do. We have just imagine the link. Oh, okay. doctrine and, talk and but behavior is not going to do that. A lot but of the, talk. The Mr. Affleck's childish behavior and hostility towards Mr. Harris is a good example of what the concept of Islamophobia can do to an otherwise intelligent and well-intentioned liberal. All he needed was the impression that Mr. Harris was a bigot, and that was it. He didn't listen to any of his arguments, thus he strawmanned his arguments and got them wrong again and again and again and again and again. He interrupted everyone on the panel multiple times. He he was disrespectful, at times incoherent, and come to find out after the show, he hadn't read any of Sam Harris's books and was completely unfamiliar with his work. Now for the irony. What kind of person hates those with different views, disrespects them openly, misrepresents what they stand for, and all the while without doing the slightest bit of research? Here's a clue. It's the same kind of person who is not interested in having debates, not interested in learning anything, and not interested in changing changing anything either. When it comes to thinking and speaking critically about Islam, there are unfortunately a lot of liberals who think and act in the same knee-jerk fashion that Ben Affleck did on this episode of Real Time. And just like Ben Affleck, they're not being intellectually honest, and they're not being very liberal either. Even though they might think they are, they're really no better than a policeman in a Monty Python sketch. Look, I must warn you that anything you may say will be ignored, and furthermore, <laughs> given all the chance, I'll put my fist through your teeth for dang for tang in their effort to confront prejudice and conformity some liberals accidentally employ those very traits themselves <laughs> Out of you and I'll do you for heresy. Heresy? Blimey, I didn't expect the Spanish Inquisition. Shut up! For dang, for dang! There are two things to learn from this. One, it's not enough to want to be on the right side of history, or to simply intend to fight against bigotry. Good intentions alone are not good enough. You have to be an admirable and curious human being as well, otherwise you run the risk of smearing someone while making an ass of yourself. And two, just because an argument is taboo doesn't mean that it's wrong, and it doesn't mean that the person who made the argument is full of hate. Some people wrestle with hard truths that are difficult to properly understand. If you strike these people down, label them, and misrepresent them so that others will inevitably treat them with contempt and hostility, you yourself are the bigot, and you're not making this world any better of a place. In all seriousness, how hard can it be to tell the difference between people like this We have to empower the true reformers in the Muslim world yeah. to, to change it. And people like this. Muhammad did nothing but made this himself a pervert! Go home!
Some people don't like you to talk about those things. I know that. Some people don't like you to mention certain things. Some people don't want you to say this. Some people don't want you to say that. Some people are really fucking stupid. <laughs> Did you ever notice that? How many really stupid people you run into during the day? God damn, there's a lot of stupid bastards walking around. Look at it this way. Think of how stupid the average person is and then realize half of them are stupider than that. And it doesn't take you very long to spot one of them, does it? Take you about eight seconds. You'll be listening to some guy. You guys are saying, if you want to be liberals, believe in liberal principles, right. like freedom of speech, like, right. um, you know, we are endowed by our uh, forefathers with an inalienable life, like all men are created no. equal. This guy is fucking stupid. <laughs> then there are some people, they're not stupid, they're full of shit. <laughs> uh, that doesn't take very long to spot either, does it? Take you about the same amount of time. You'll be listening to some guy and say, well, he's fairly intelligent. This May is such a caricature of okay, wait a so minute. much of the world. And this does have the tinge a little bit of the way white racists talk about African-Americans. Ah, he's full of shit. 